Hello, my name is Chris Bailey and I am a Blender YouTuber at YouTube slash C Bailey Film. Today I'm bringing you this tutorial with CG Cookie. We're gonna be making photorealistic procedural rock shaders. Let's get started. Now, don't forget to head over to cgcookie.com. We've got a ton of amazing Blender training material and resources there for you, along with some amazing Blender artists ready to answer your questions. Head over and enroll today. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a procedural shader that looks like rock. We're gonna go for photo reel as close as we can get, and I'll give you some basic principles and ideas when creating procedural rock in a shader and kind of what to think about and how to make it happen. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start off with a different setup for this. I'm just gonna hit A to select all and X to delete. Shift A, I'm just gonna grab a UV sphere, right click Shade Smooth, and just scale this up. This is gonna be the basis for our material. Now I'm gonna split my view right down the middle here. If you don't know how to split your view, if you bring your cursor to the corner of any of these screens, you get this little cross symbol, and if you click and drag, you'll get a split view. So you can always replace that by dragging back the other way. Now we're gonna take this window and we're gonna turn it into the shader editor. And I'll just get rid of that side panel there. And Come over here to the Material tab, we'll click New to create a new material, we'll call it Rock. Now, the thing with Rock is it's really helpful to look at a reference. So I'm gonna pull up a reference here that I found online. Um, this is just a photo of a rock, and you can see there's a lot of different complex patterns. And the basic gist behind creating a really good photoreal procedural rock shader is to layer on multiple types of noise that all work together to create a general sense of realism. First, we're gonna go ahead and switch our view to rendered view so we can see the render. We're also gonna add a light, so I'm gonna go Shift A, Light, Sunlight, and I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit. I'll Shift E to duplicate, rotate another one around like this, just to give us some nice lighting on that. And then I'm also gonna turn off all my controls and stuff so it's a real clean view. And I'm gonna come over here, and first thing I'm gonna do is create a Musgrave texture. So I'm gonna go Shift A and type in Musgrave. Musgrave is a really great material for creating organic stuff, especially rock. I'm going to create a bump node and I'll drop this here and we're going to take the height and we're going to plug it into the height and we're going to take the normal and plug it into the normal. So what's happening here is that Musgrave texture node creates a black and white image that is a random noise pattern. The bump node takes this black and white image into the height input and transfers it into a normal and a normal is the direction that a polygon face is pointing. So if we look at the original mesh of our sphere here, I can open up this drop down and turn on normals so we can see all the little blue lines point in the direction that each of these faces is pointing. And that's the normal. So in essence, what's happening here, the bump node is creating normals based on a height map of black and white values. So it's creating a bunch of new blue lines. If you imagine lots of new blue lines shooting off across the surface, so that when a light hits it, Blender knows how to calculate what are the what does the surface look like. It's it's basically simulating geometry. That's what this node's doing. It's simulating geometry. Okay, now we're going to take our Musgrave texture and we're going to turn the scale right up. And we're also going to take the dimension down. And we're going to take the detail up. And you can see it really starts to break things up into these kind of islands of bump and shape. And you can just play with these to get all different types of rock. And that's going to be a theme, I guess, through the process of this tutorial is that every layer that we add on, you could, you'll see you can tweak to infinite degrees in order to get lots of variation in different styles. So keep that in mind as we go. You don't have to follow things exactly as I go. Now I'm going to take my bump and I'm going to turn the distance down to 0.1. And that's going to help to get the bump height map, so that dark and light values of the height map, to be a bit more in line with the actual size of my object. Um, and this means that the distance between the base of the trough from the top of the peak in terms of the black and white height map, it, it tells it that the tells Blender that the distance between those two is 0.1. So it's 0.1 Blender units. So it's a much smaller distance. If this was a very large object, I'd want that distance to be a full one. But think about you know how high are these peaks and valleys actually traveling. Okay, the next thing that's important is layering types of noise on top of each other. So we're gonna have a second Musgrave texture. And we're gonna combine them right here. We're gonna go for a mix RGB, which tends to be a great way to mix different types of shaders. I'll put them together here. And I've got my factor, which allows me to control how much I'm mixing. Now these are the same, so we're not gonna see a difference, but I'm gonna turn the scale down to two. So this one's much larger. Um, and we can have a look at what it looks like here. If I just switch to one, it'll just show us this one. And you can see that as that scale gets smaller, these uh, it spreads out that noise. So I can take my detail down. I can maybe increase the scale, but drop the detail. 
I'm just trying to get larger uh, sort of bumps in the surface. Now I can bring these together and I can kind of blend between the two until I get a nice variation, a nice combination of the two. I think that looks pretty good. Now, the next thing we want to do is when you have a real even bump pattern like this, sometimes it's easy to identify that it's just a procedural noise. So it's a good idea to introduce a little bit of noise into the way this texture is being placed on the surface of our rock. In order to do that, we need to actually affect the vector of each of these different uh, textures. So what we can do is come here and first grab a texture coordinate node. And this was this is what's going on already. So right now, Blender, by, by um, default, is using the generated texture coordinate to place these guys on this, this surface. So it's generating where, do the, where are the coordinates for these materials? Where do they need to go? How do we put them on this 3D surface? So it's generating its own coordinates to do this. And that's how you get this look. You can see nothing changed when I plug this in. However, if we come over here and we add in some noise to these numbers, to this information, we can begin to distort the way Blender's placing this object. So I'm gonna grab a Vornai, Vornar, I'm going to grab a Veroni texture here, and I'm going to also grab in a mix RGB. And I'll take the generated coordinate and I'll drop it here and I'll take the distance and I'll drop it here. You can grab the color or the position and they're all going to give slightly different results. Um, just a matter of experimenting. And then I'll take the color and I'll pipe it into the vector of each of these. Now, if you've never seen this done before, it might be very confusing at first why I'm plugging vector color into a vector. Um, and as you can see, we can actually uh, you know, turn this up and down. You can get a sense of the effect here by uh, just having a look. You can see how it's distorting things further uh, based on the the pattern here. We can we can change this uh, scale. I think I might keep it at five. I think it looks pretty good. So this might be confusing at first. You know, we're taking a coordinate, a vector coordinate, and we're piping it into a color, and then we're piping that color into another vector coordinate. But try and think of this in terms of just sets of numbers. The generated texture coordinate is an X, Y, Z number. So it's, it's got three numbers, right? So the position in X, the position in Y, and the position in Z. Color is red, green, and blue, which is another set of just three numbers. You know, if you open up a color, you're going to see you've got values for your red, green, and blue. So we're basically just taking a set of three numbers, and we're coming in here, and we're mixing it with another set of three numbers. And then we're taking those set of three numbers and we're using them to place the vector. So that's why Blender doesn't have a hard time with this. It's fine translating between these so that uh, we can use them in different ways. So it's just a really helpful thing to understand if you've never um, been able to wrap your head around that. OK, so we've got all that stuff now feeding into. So we've got these sort of two layers of noise. Now let's go ahead and add a third, another layer. So a fourth layer of noise now on top of all this. In fact, I'm going to use another Veroni texture uh, to create a different type of noise on this surface. And I want to distort it as well. In fact, I'm going to distort it just with one of these. So I'm going to take my Musgrave right here and plug this in. And uh, you can try it with anything. Um, and I'm just kind of guessing right now this is going to look interesting. Um, so it, it's useful to experiment by plugging all these different values in. But you can do all kinds of stuff into the vector uh, of, an, um, of a texture to get really cool results. All right, so we're going to need to add this in. So I'm going to grab all this right here. And uh, we can add this, this value in here. now. An important thing to note is that, remember, we're turning this into this black and white height map. So it's just zero and one values. There's no color information here, uh, even though this is saying color and this is a mix RGB, which is usually dealing with color. And we've got vectors of three numbers and stuff. But you can see that it's all being piped into this gray node. And the gray node represents a floating point number. It's a single number uh, with a decimal point and a set of numbers after it. So what we can do is we can actually just mix this in with a math node. So I grab a math node and drop this here. And I'm just going to add these values into these values. So if you're visualizing this correctly, that will make sense to you um, in terms of what we just did with this. But uh, you can also add in a mix node, and it would be just the same. So a mix RGB node would give us the same result. But we might we have this factor slider, which is quite useful. Um, we don't have the factor slider uh, when we're doing it this way. Uh, so it's a little bit harder to get it just right. So uh, what I can do is. Um, I could just come right here and add, change this to a multiply. And now I'm multiplying this value by another value. And I can now have that same kind of control. So you can see here I can introduce this ever so slightly. Value, so it's 0.07. That's giving me these nice ridges. Change that scale a little bit, come down some. So I've just gone with the multiply, uh, multiplying by, by 0.13. And my Verona texture just dropped its scale down to 1.45. Um, and you can see it's all working together quite nicely.
to create some pretty realistic looking uh, texture to this. Now we want to kind of advance that texture a little bit by adding some color to it. So I'm going to grab a color ramp because I want to do a flat color across the whole thing. I kind of want to use this height map to generate different types of colors at different points within the surface. So I'm going to grab this value here. Instead of plugging it into the height, I'm going to plug this one now into the color ramp and then I'll take this color and plug it into the base color. Now we can create different pips along this gradient and it will use those to color things based on that same height map. So it will look like the ridges and valleys have different colors. You can see that effect already. Now this is where you can really use uh, lots of different variation to create all different types of materials, um, different types of rock, um, lots of different things here. I'm gonna go ahead and add in just a few with some saturation. So I'll bring a little bit of saturation in this and I might just adjust that hue some and go for some earthy browns and you can play around by dragging these either closer or further away from each other to get uh, some really nice uh, little islands of color. I'm just going to change it to ease which will create softer gradient fall offs. Now at this point it might be helpful to actually kind of see this on an object that looks like a rock so I'm going to go into edit mode and actually not even going to go into edit mode I'm just going to come over here I'm going to add a displacement modifier onto this sphere I'm going to click new to create a new texture. Click this button to go to the texture tab, which is also just right down here. And I'm going to switch this from image or movie and we're going to go to clouds. And I'm going to take the scale and just play with it till things look pretty good. I can come back up to my tab and I can also adjust the strength of this displacement. Okay, now another thing we can do is with rock, it tends to happen such that the top of the rock, if we get our reference out, the top of the rock, you see how this is a bit whiter. It's got like a lighter colors in the top and it's darker down at the bottom. That tends to be because of course rain and stuff, erosion is going to happen down the top of the rock and it's also hit by the sun more so it's bleached by the sun more often. So what we can do is we can darken the underside of this rock um, based on which direction it's facing. There's a cool trick for doing that. We can come over here and we can grab the texture coordinate node and what we can do is we can separate XYZ and this will take the um, normal, remember we talked about normals again, so the direction that each face is pointing. Take that normal and what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in here so we can separate those directions out and we can take the Z direction, the Z point value. This will give us a result, it basically shows us which faces are pointing up. If I plug this directly into the base color, you'll see what it looks like. We'll have a black and white image where it's white for every face that's pointing up and it's black for every face that's pointing down and it's a variation within those faces that have a variation between those two. So what we can do is we can take this and we can add it into our color system. So I'll keep my color here and I'm going to grab another color ramp. So I've got a little bit of contrast control, plug this in here, and then I can grab a mix RGB shader and I can drop it right here. And then I can take the color of this one, pop it in here and then do something like a multiply, which is going to darken things wherever there's black and it's not going to do anything if it's white. So if I turn this right up, and I also can bring these in a bit. You'll see we get these really nice, really nice delineation between the two. So erosion, kind of an erosion effect. Uh, but we need to distort this a little bit further. So we can do the same thing we were doing over here. I can grab my mix RGB node. I can duplicate it, drop it here, and then we can grab one of these. We can grab this one again as well if we want. I just pop this in. And then by introducing it a little bit, you can see we get some nice noise in that. So it's not a perfect clean look great. I'm going to back it off a little bit because that's a bit too intense. Now at the moment it's going to get this sort of plastic look to it um, and that has to do with our material settings over here. So last thing we can do is we can come over and we can either turn down the roughness to make it look even more like a wet rock or we can turn the roughness right up and we can also adjust the specular and that's going to give it more of a realistic rock look. Now finally we can come back to our main values here at the beginning with our main texture. We can adjust those just to get the right look uh, playing around with the scale and adjusting things like the dimension and the detail to get different levels of intensity in the uh, the roughness of our rock. And finally, I'm going to come over to my color and just add a few more little pips. I'm just going to go right in here towards the end and I'm going to make a dark one and then grab one more and just put it after. So I like that that looks, it's a nice sort of addition. You play with this color to get one that looks just right. You could possibly do like a bit of like a moss thing, like if you went for like a green color or something like that could be really nice. And I'm gonna drag this one way down here. So there's more fall off between that light color. 
go. Now to get a final sense of how our rock looks, let's turn off our scene world and pick a nice HDRI here, something like this. And we can also turn on screen space, reflections, bloom, and ambient occlusion. And just give myself a little plane here. Let's see what it looks like sticking up in the ground. I'm going to turn my specular up and I like bringing the roughness down a little bit. I think that looks kind of nice when there's a little bit of a wet sheen. There we go. So hopefully you can see how you can continue to layer on more and more and more noise and different types of noise and distorting noises and just keep adding them together and combining them with these height maps and then feeding them into a color ramp to get some color. Overall, you can get a really unique and really cool looking piece of rock using nothing but procedural shaders. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to leave us a comment as well. Let us know what you thought of this tutorial and what you'd like to see in the future. We'd really appreciate the feedback. And please check out cgcookie.com as well. There's a ton of great resources there for you to check out and learn Blender. Thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later.